Ethnic beauty and hair care is a booming industry. In 2004, it grossed $1.5 billion, a number that is estimated to gain $200 million by 2008. Of all its consumers, African Americans are the largest group to buy products that cater to one ethnicity. Most of these products are manufactured and distributed by non-black companies. Where there is a market, people are going to go in there and get that money out of that market if they're able to do so. And there is a huge market for black hair care products and there are some folks who have targeted this market to make their money out of it. As long as there's money in it, there's going to be somebody going after it. Asians are among those who have chosen to tap into this market's potential. But not everyone is as enthusiastic about Korean manufacturers or Korean beauty supplies in the black community. In the San Francisco Bayview newspaper, an article criticizes Asian beauty supplies, stating that they are racist and monopolizing on the black community to drive out black-owned beauty supplies. If I have capitalization which allows me to sell at a 1 or 2 percent margin and your capitalization only allows you to sell at a 3 or 4 or 5 percent margin, then that means you have to charge a higher price than me. So I'm going to get that business. That's just market. That's just business. That's not an attempt, a deliberate attempt to drive you out of the market. It's just me doing a better, doing a job, better job of doing business than you. So it has nothing to do with race? Oh no, I don't think it has anything to do with race per se at all. No. The Black Owned Beauty Supply Association, otherwise known as BOBSA, is an organization that has mobilized itself to, quote, connect the black dots and take back the African American hair industry. This is a documentary sponsored by BOBSA to educate people on the truth about the black hair industry. We are the number one biggest the, the ethnic the distributor. In the West Coast? Yes. The uh, African American style is very big business. Almost every week they change the style for hair. What percentage of your, of your business is Afro American? Uh, about 100 <laughs> percent. About three years ago, they started to blacklist our product as they brought their own products in. They start to manufacture curling irons and they duplicate everything that you manufacture. But they don't think you're black. The Koreans no, don't think you're no, black. No, I mean, when they call me, they yeah, think that, you know, I'm a Korean store. Are you black? or Asian. How do you feel about that? Are you black or Asian? I was like, That's crazy. what is, what does that have to do with me purchasing a product from you? Since they control 80% of the distribution of Afro hair care products, especially professional products that are sold in beauty supply stores only, it only stands to reason they can control what gets distributed. Fan Mart is a swap meet located in San Diego. There are three separate Korean-owned beauty supplies inside of it. In all three of the beauty supplies, all of the products were sold for African Americans, as were the products inside of these two other Korean-owned beauty supplies. When asked about the black hair industry's current situation and the unrest of the black community, the Korean-owned stores all declined to comment. This fan art patron explains why she shopped there. Why do you choose to shop in Asian-owned stores rather than in black stores? Well, because one thing I find a lot of home black stores. Mm -hmm. And I support this because sometimes their prices are a little better. Think they're less costly? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes that's why we go there because, you know, their price is a little better because sometimes I think when the black people give us shop, they, you know, they jack up the price. Their prices are a little expensive because I have went to the one in Imperial and come back over here and found their prices a little cheaper for the same hair. Because if I paid $50 for hair, when I come up here and get it for $35. <laughs> so is Bobsa really going to be able to take back the black hair industry? There is some criticism. If you look at Bobsa's website, there is no real plan of action. You know, I will support if we find them, you know, if that's around, when I do, we go to them. Okay. If African Americans today decide that we're all going to wear a short hair hairstyle, those, all those other industries will be put out of business, completely put out of business because nobody will be buying the long hair that industry would disappear. And then we decided to, the day after tomorrow, we're only going to buy the black hair if it comes to a black beauty supply store or a black distributor, then the Koreans would have to line up behind myself and Glenn Coffey and Robert Butler and Corey Holiday and, and uh, um, Ebony Beauty Supply. And they would have to line up to get the business because they would have to come through us. It's a matter of choices. It's just, it's, it's, it's market. It's a matter of choices in the marketplace. So basically what you're saying is that if the black community is upset about this, they should do something about it instead of like complaining that the Koreans are stealing and that they're racist and stuff and that they should just look for look for black owned stores. Yes, basically that is what I'm saying. 
With all of the conflicting opinions, the state of the black beauty supply industry remains the same. It is owned and operated by non-black companies. As for the industry's future, we'll all have to wait and see.